Hey guys, what's up? This is Emmy and Basis. And the Metallica Guru. And we are the Metal Brothers. Hell yeah. You know, before we move on to our topics, you know, it's kind of interesting. You know, we all just started out battling this one guy named All Stupid TV Show. And look where we end up today. It's amazing. You know, cause Things I didn't... do change. Yes. Sorry. It's okay, dude. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, you know, we're sitting there, you know, I was like, Okay, this two week battle, you know, I was like, all right, I made some cool, I met some cool people and everything, and I was like, man, this is pretty cool, you know. I was like, um, I'm not gonna talk to them anymore, you know. Yeah. When the war was yeah. over, look where it is. Talk yeah, to we're them talking to each other. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, to point things out a little bit to the audience, things have changed a little bit between the Stupid TV show and us a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, ever since the Hannah Huang video, I gained a little bit more respect for him because he kind of saw the, the way that I saw you know, uh, in a very serious manner. And, you know, we got along a little bit. We, I even said to him, you know what, you can keep the videos about me, I'll keep the videos about you. But this is just to remind us of how things can actually turn out different and how we can uh, evolve a lot better. And speaking of evolving, uh, I got into a major Facebook war with, you know, uh, let's just say a very big rival of mine from middle school and all that. Uh, the video is going to be uploaded here in a couple of minutes or maybe it's probably already it's uploaded already right now. It's already so, done. Oh, it's already done? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it's yeah. weird. Um, and it's a possibility I'm going to get chewed out. But uh, being that I, I've been harassed a lot, I really just don't see this is going to give me any... I don't think this is going to give me any, any trouble. But anyway, let's move on. Uh, We're going to talk about the new Spongebob movie that's coming out either... This year, next year, or the next year after that, because I am very disappointed. SpongeBob, the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, two. Wow. <laughs> All right, fairly good reference. Uh, uh, this is be a big disappointment, because SpongeBob's already gayed himself out, and I've got proof. He said he loves Squidward. He said he loves Patrick. He's hugged both of them. And did I mention he loves them? Loves both of them. He runs yeah. around hugging them. Running around in his underwear while hugging them. Cheating? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. This is going to be a very big disappointment because Spongebob should have quit a long time ago. The only exception that I liked about SpongeBob SquarePants were the was the first ep uh, the first seasons, the first season. I'm sorry, uh, was when he got a job at the Krusty Krab. That actually so happened to be one of the funniest episodes that I have ever seen. And there was one episode, with the exception, which featured Sebastian Bach. Uh, <laughs> crap. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I was right. Um, the SpongeBob movie was okay in my opinion. You know, David Hasselhoff was in there. Hey. It's, it's not often you see David Hasselhoff uh, in a Nickelodeon kind of movie. Exactly. I still have something right here. If you people could see uh, right there, SpongeBob SquarePants movie poster right there, right next to the Three Stooges. If y'all can't see it, I'm sorry, but you know it's just the best I can do. Oh, speaking of Three Stooges, do you hear? Did you hear about the new Three Stooges that are coming out? Oh, I'm definitely gonna be there. I'm, I'm, I don't care. I'm definitely gonna. My ass is gonna be sitting there with that fucking Three Stooges 25th anniversary thing right in my damn hand. I'm gonna be sitting there watching it. I hope there's gonna be a second one with uh, Shimp. The the first the commercial I saw, I thought it was like a horror movie at first, but all of a sudden it was the Three Stooges. Like, ah. Oh. <laughs> okay, I don't know what's weird, getting Rick rolled or teased. Both. Both. Gotta go with both. <laughs> uh, Although Rick, Rick Rowling would probably get you more pissed off. True. So, my favorite episode of Spongebob was the Bang Geeks, because the person who actually sung that and wrote it was from one of my favorite 80s bands, Guafria, or Guafria, whatever it's called. Um, David Glenn Easley. I love Guafria. I mean... David Glenn Easley's voice is just amazing. Sweet, sweet victory. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I swear, 
David Glenn Easley's just got a really good voice, and it just wow. Check out his band Guifria. It's G U I F F R I A. So yeah. All right, that's pretty much it for SpongeBob one. Now we're gonna move on to the nerdy part, which is since we've done Digimon Transformer, I mean not Transformers, we've done Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, Digimon. Well, now we have. Well, yeah, we've done Yu-Gi-Oh. We're gonna do Transformers tonight. <coughs> you go first. Okay, Transformers. It's been. It took me until about maybe in my late teens, like the late end of my teen years, just to get into Transformers. It's really weird that, you know, I probably didn't get into it until maybe I could have been a kid and got into the uh, subject of Transformers. But by finding out you know, the anime cartoon, probably 2006 or seven, I could be wrong right there. I got a little bit into it, but then I kind of got out. And then hearing about the Transformers movie coming out, I was like, okay, I can give this a shot. Okay, the first one was pretty good, in my opinion, in my opinion, but then after the second one, I have not seen the third one, but I can hear a lot of criticism from a lot of people that the second and third one really sucked. Michael Bay just ruined the whole thing. Ugh. But if I had to pick any of my favorite, you know, out of, out of the Decepticon or a, an Autobot, it would definitely go with Optimus Prime. Even my dad has collections of Transformers somewhere in, in his office. Uh, I'm not sure if he has a... I think he has... A, was, it, was his name Bumblebee or was it... Uh, which one? Uh, the new Transformers or the old one? Old one, like Bumblebee, the yellow Hot one? Hot Shot. That's... Okay, I'm sorry. I'm not really much of a Transformers kind of guy, but... By watching the first movie and a little bit of the anime series, I got into it. I mean, I see Star Screamer, uh, Megatron. Star yeah, Star Screamer was kind of weird in my opinion. Is. And then Megatron became the bitch in the second movie, and I can he I hear yeah. he's a bitch in the third. Then he becomes Galvatron later on. I think I don't know. I haven't seen the third one. I'm not sure. So, uh, what do you think? I have seen Transformers. I've seen the original movie. I like the uh, theme song to it by the lo uh, by Lion. Oh my God, I love Lion. Trouble in Angel City. Oh, such a nice album. Anyways, eh. um, I love Transformers when it was um, really good. I liked Transformers Armada, Energon, and Cybertron. Now, the one I personally like is Energon. The power links thing kind of, was kind of weird, because it's like you see the people's heads are junk and all that. When they power links, it's like you can still see the head, but it's not moving or anything like that. Okay. Wait, have you seen the second one though? The second movie? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I went to go see it in theaters. Uh, okay. Who, who was this one? Uh, it was it was in the in the land of Egypt that they were in. Yeah. Uh. Two people were actually down right by trucks in the little pitfall right by the pyramid. There was a giant Decepticon who gathered, like, you know, these cement trucks and all this, and he had, like, a thousand green eyes, and he sucked, like, all this sand, like, a, creating a spiral of a tornado of sand into his mouth, and he ate one of the Autobots, but then the other one came out. What was his name? Oh, my God, that was so many years ago. Oh, not so many, but I don't remember. Because that would probably have to be my second favorite uh, out of out of them all, yeah. Megatron just just doesn't cut it for me. You you probably lays at number three, but at number two no. Yeah, I I like Megatron better than Armada and Energon. Um, okay. Uh, the Powerling thing was pretty cool. My favorite, okay, my three top favorites for uh, Transformers would have to be. Ironhide. I love Ironhide and uh, Energon. He sounded like a bitch at first. Come on, Hotshot, let's power links. <laughs> no. But he was pretty cool. I liked Ironhide. Ooh. Also, the angry video game nerd actually played one of the unreleased Japanese versions of Transformers. For, I think it was either the Super, Ninten like Super Nintendo or maybe, I don't 
I don't know. I can't Where be sure. Where the fuck does this guy get all this money from? I don't know, but it was the. It, but it was never released. It was, re but however though the game was okay. The, I wouldn't say sucked ass. I'd say it's a very one of the hardest, complicated, unfair games that you can play. But you know, there's some flaws within this game that when you battle bosses, you just battle a logo of a Decepticon, a, just a logo, and it happens maybe one to four times. And then you battle Megatron, but oh wait a minute, Megatron's not the final boss. You gotta fight another one, and it probably looks like the uh, oh, I don't know, Cyber uh, Godzilla. Unicron. Probably it's probably Unicron. It was pretty weird. Um, the levels and all that were pretty damn hard from what I saw. Oh damn, this almost fell. <laughs> Uh, come on, computer. Can you just load, please? I'm sorry if I'm That's fine. taking up. That's fine, dude. Don't worry about it. My second favorite was Red Alert. I liked him in Transformers Armada because he was an original. And then when more Transformers came along, I was like, aren't you going to fucking do anything, Red Alert, besides sit there and stay? You, like, you Hotshot and Optimus all fought in the very first. Now you just... Suck dick. What the what the hell? But anyways, I, I liked Red Alert though. My third favorite is Override. I love Override. Um, she was in uh, Transformers Cybertron. I wish there was porn of her. J.K. Um, yeah, I love Transformers. I've even got a poster right here for Transformers Cybertron. If y'all could somewhat see, hold on, let me get it here. Uh, right there. You can barely see it under the dinosaurs and stuff. It's pretty much my Transformers poster. So yeah, that's my Transformers poster. Uh, I've got some Transformers toys. I got Cliff Jumper, Ironhide, Jetfire, Optimus Prime. Excuse me, Scouter Shot. Um. Yeah, scatter shot, hot shot. Uh, shit. Who is the other? Who is that other one? Uh, kind of like it's kind of like an Italian kind of colored car. I don't remember. I don't. I do not remember. <laughs> but yeah, I like Transformers. Uh, but the new one, new stuff, I don't like. But I do like Stan Bush. Dare and the Touch is amazing. So. If you ever get the uh, Transformers the movie album from the 80s, freaking get it. That's the best freaking movie album you will ever get, I promise you, in my opinion. Because if you like glam metal, hard rock, rock, oh my god, that it, it, it blew me away. I listen to all the songs. There's some bands that are not even together anymore, but... Those songs that they did are amazing. The solo work, the solos, just, oh my god. I'm talking about some good music. Also, I'm trying to search for some heavy metal stuff and it's giving me this Jersey Shore crap. <laughs> the hell's wrong with this thing? My friend looked like Polly D for a couple of months. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I want to look at heavy metal, not fucking Rita Rex. What the hell is wrong with this computer? What's wrong with the internet? I can't look at the favorite band stuff. Are you kidding me? Well, do you want to move on to our music topic of the day? Yep. Megadeth. Ha <laughs> ha. Which was his turn to pick. I was going to pick Prince. Oh, God, Purple no. Rain. <laughs> no. We'll, Which we'll do also, that another time. Go ahead. I said we'll do that another time. Pearl, we'll pick Prince another time. <laughs> also, Prince uh, Prince is also referenced in Jane Silent Bob Strike Back, only except with the uh, the members of uh, the Time, which were also involved in Prince's Bahrain movie. Which I have to say, Jane Silent Bob is definitely the movie you got to see. Oh, dude, Jungle Love, yeah, oh we yo oh, we yo. Oh. I think I wanna wanna know ya, yeah. What? Anyway, anyway, we move on to Megadeth. Ah, 
Once arrival of Metallica, Megadeth is also a thrash metal band, part of the Big Four, along with Slayer and Anthrax. Dave Mustaine, who is the former lead guitarist of Metallica, becomes the lead singer and well, frontman of Megadeth, along with the current members of Sean Drover, Chris, I'm sorry, <clears throat> Chris Broderick, and Dave Elfson. Anyway, you know they're they're past members like Kerry Keane. Damn, Nat, keep flying all over the place. I'm sorry. <clears throat> There's some current members like Kerry King, who is in Slayer now. I think he, I don't know if he still has a uh, some some sort of beef with Dave Mustaine. Uh, we have, you know, there was Jeff Young. Uh, Marty Friedman. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's right. Marty Friedman is also in there. I love his solo album, Dragon Mistress. That's I love that album. I have it. Actually, I'm actually gonna look at that. Uh, it's now that you mention it. And then it's there was like good. Jimmy DeGrasso. Jimmy DeGrasso. Listen to Saturation Point. That is a good song. See, I'm I'm actually trying to look at like some Metallica stuff, like like on the Metallica store, and it's just linking me to all these other places, it's giving me Jersey Shore crap. <laughs> but anyway, I, I have never we, seen we'll, Jersey Shore. Fuck <laughs> Jersey once. Shore. Fuck it. <laughs> but anyway. Megadeth. Uh, let me see if I can name any other past members. Um, I think Glenn, wasn't Glenn Drover one of them? I have no idea. All I know is about their music. <laughs> I never really Glenn. looked at their background history. So that's Marty okay. Friedman. I think. Well, I think also uh, Kerry King. I'm not. That it, it, it could be wrong. I mean, sources can be wrong at sometimes. Kerry King was probably the ones I probably don't really. Let's scratch the carry thing out because I could be wrong, but uh, it could also be a possibility that James James McDonough was probably in one of the. But anyway, um, I can't exactly be sure about the very first album. I've been looking for for one of the albums, which is called "Killing Is My Business." That I cannot find on iTunes anywhere. But anyway. Um, the original song that Dave Mustaine was actually, uh, well, him and Metallica made, The Four Horsemen was originally called The Mechanics, in which the, the music is still the same, but the lyrics are a lot different. The whole lyrics have changed, and there's a, there's a little bit of addition to, you know, some of the solos and a little bit to the beat to it. I mean, the tempos are a lot faster than, uh, okay, the original is the... Uh, Okay, Dave Mustaine's version is a lot faster than Metallica, so let's just put it at that. Mm. Um, there's some of my favorite albums, which is uh, Rust in Peace, uh, Peace Sells, But Who's Mine, which I think that's probably would be the best of Megadeth, and then there's United Abominations, uh, which the new album, Public Enemy, and trust me, I've been working on voc uh, rough vocals for Public Enemy. That stuff helps me a lot. Uh, okay, but some of my favorite songs are Du Le Monde, which actually I think sounds French, uh, has ambience to it, but it also has some, you know, form of badassery in it. You know, it, it's just matched all together. You know what? Fuck you, you money scamming piece of shit. Sorry. I'm just gonna log out of this damn thing because I can't buy anything. Anyway, uh, other okay, other songs. Uh, we have Rusted Peace, uh, Public Enemy, because that's also part of the album. Peace Sells, But Who's Buying? Now that, oh yes, that probably would probably be the top favorite Megadeth song, in my opinion. Peace Sells, But Who's Buying? What else? Uh, you have Hangar 18, Holy Wars, which, yeah, Holy Wars, or... Um, Tornado of Souls. Uh, what else? Ooh, In My Darkest Hour. This one was actually inspired by the death of Cliff Burton from Metallica when Dave Mustaine actually heard of uh, Cliff Burton's death in Lundby, Sweden. Although the song was not about Cliff Burton, however, though, the inspiration of what uh, of Burton's death was actually about uh, his, break, uh, his breakup with his girlfriend. Uh, Dave Mustaine had a breakup with his girlfriend. He actually made the song in My Darkest Hour. 
But then comes along, which I like, which looks like a, it seems more like a sequel, which is called I'll Be There, which is kind of referencing uh, a line from In My Darkest Hour, which in, in My Darkest Hour it says, In my hour of need, you are not there. But in this song, it's giving a more positive feeling to it. And this might sound girly of me, but this song made me cry. <laughs> Definitely made me cry. Because when he says in his, in his lyrics, he says it almost in the same way as in My Darkest Hour, but he says it like this. In my hour of need, you were there. Always. And now it's my turn to be there for you. This is really where my soul was like just... It, I just had chills just listening to that part. Now, I can understand that Dave Mustaine has had rivalries with Metallica, Carrie King, uh, you know, in the past, but, you know, some things do change, and I'm glad there's no rivalry between Metallica and Megadeth anymore, that, that they can all get along. You know, this is what really makes me feel happy. Now, Dave Mustaine also plays a big inspirational role Although I say James Hetfield is uh, tied with Cliff Burton to being the number one hero, Dave Mustaine it goes into that top part of the list because it's actually because of him I've actually found a way to roughen my vocals. I found some inspiration to what I can do, and I found a way to expand a little bit on how I can do stuff. So I can play drums and do vocals. I mean, I can't do guitar. I mean, I can do riffs, not riffs, but more like intros. <laughs> Maybe that's as far as I can go, but. <laughs> There's one more song though I think I didn't mention. Um, I mentioned the me the mechanics. Anger eighteen. I mentioned that one. Okay. Uh, I don't know any others. I only have oh, Pri albums. Prince of Darkness. Prince of Darkness. Yes, uh, that song, Prince of Darkness. Oh, dude. That one was like a real, it, it was real dark, but you know, at the same time, it was also real badass. Of course, some of you already know I am a non religious Christian and all that. And, uh, Dave Mustaine's a born again Christian, I think. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but, anyways, that's all I really got to say. But here's one thing I would like to say to the audience this may seem irrelevant, even though we were just talking about Megadeth. Religion should not be, it, it shouldn't be debated between someone else just to prove if one's beliefs are right or wrong. That we should all love each other no matter what. It doesn't matter what our beliefs are. It doesn't matter if you're a Wiccan or an agnostic, an atheist, or a Catholic, a Buddhist, or anything like that. You know, everyone, we all just have to get along and accept people for who they are and not try to beat people with Bibles and shove views down their throats. That's just not how it works. In no way in the Bible does it say that, you know, you were supposed to force these things, but rather, in the words of Mr. Repsion, that we are supposed to share it. However, though, that's also in the, what in the Bible says, but I take that from the Lord. If I took it from a human being, I'd probably get condemned. But anyway, I'm sorry to bore you there. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> I'm starting to fall asleep a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, me too. It's like late. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen. Well, actually, Emmy and Basis, you actually have the honor. <laughs> uh, all right. I am Emmy and Basis. And I am the Metallica Guru. And we are the Metal Brothers. William Shatner here. About to say goodbye here. Later. We took we took this from Cal Stewart TV. <laughs> yes, I remember the response. Yes. Uh, well, we'll catch you later, guys. Anyways, you guys have a good night, man. You too, guys. Later.